want to just for a few moments share what the Lord's put on my heart tonight. Uh, just go through a couple chapters of um, the book of Genesis. And I want you to go to chapter 12, and then I'm going to look at several of, just a couple other verses. And I want to start at chapter 12, verse 1. This is a, like a seven-minute message. It says in verse 1, now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, this is, this is a covenant that God makes with Abram. Hang with me just a few moments. I'm going to give you my subject and the scripture at the end. Okay, can y'all can y'all hang with that for just okay? He makes a promise and establishes what is called this is a, a covenant. And the thing that God makes when God makes an agreement with you, you can take it to the bank. You can take it to the bank, uh, and God made this promise. And it's a, it's a profound promise. He's, he gives us instructions, get out of the country, take your family, get from your father's house, and I'm going to tell you where to go. I, I, I'm not telling you now, but just leave, and I'll give you directions. I'll tell you where to go. I'm going to take you to a place. And then he says this, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. That word bless implies and me. See, when we think of blessings, we think that blessings are for us. But the term blessings is that God gives you something that you might help somebody else. I need y'all to get that because it's about helping other people. I know you want to think that God did it all for you, but he ain't do it all for you. He rewards you, blesses you, grants to you, gives you. And if God knows he can get it through you, he will give it to you. So, some of you have not gotten it because he can't trust that you will, it'll pass through your hands. You will consume it on yourselves. But God says, I'm going to bless you, and, and I'm going to make your name great. And he said, you'll be a blessing. I'm, I'm going to bless you that you might bless others. And that's what God wants us to be in a posture. And then he says, uh, I'm going to make a great nation out of you. I'm, I'm going to give you descendants. I'm going to give you children and children's children. I'm going to make you a great nation. And I'm going to, and you're going to be able to be a blessing. And in verse 3, the latter part, he says, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I'm going to bless you so much and so powerful in such an amazing way that every family on the earth is going to receive a blessing because of you. That's amazing. I don't know if y'all got that. That's amazing. And so, uh, Abraham embraces the promise from God. He, he embraces the covenant. He accepts the word from God. And he's hoping and believing and trusting God to bring it to pass. But there's one major problem. He has no children. He and his bride, Sarai, have been standing on this promise for a few years, but still they've been trying, but they have no children. And it's problematic. It's it reaches a startling stage that here God had made this promise to him 
and yet God never brought it to pass. That at one point in his journey, Abram begins to question God's ability to do what he said. He begins to raise the question. He begins to be troubled about it, that there's still no child. And so they decide, Abram and his bride Sarai, decide to help God out. Y'all know the story, right? They decide they're going to help God out, and Abram and Sarai decides to offer her handmaiden to her husband. We know she wasn't a black woman. Come on, say amen. <laughs> she offers her handmaiden, and Abraham, Abram, he's still Abram, ob obliges without debate. He might have been a black man. <laughs> and Hagar gives birth to Ishmael. And hence, we have a Middle East war that has gone on for decades since that time. They reach conflict and challenges and problems. But by the time we get to chapter 17, I'm almost finished. In verse 16, I didn't get this to them, but just, uh, I'm going to read it to you. Verse, chapter 16, verse 15 and 16, it says, So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old. Is there action at 86 years of age? I'm having some hope up in this camp. And then the passage goes from 86 in verse... 16 of ver chapter 16 to chapter 17, verse 1, and now he's 99. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between you and me and will multiply you exceedingly. And this is my text. This is why I'm going to close. I'm bringing it to a close and giving you my text at the same time, my subject. At 99 years of age, the Lord appears to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God. Let me give you another name of what that means. El Shaddai. It, it, it means, L means God. Let me say it in a preacher, verse, preacher voice, God. L means God. Shaddai means almighty and sufficient. He's almighty and sufficient. It, here's, here God interrupts and comes into the domain of Abraham, Abram's life and says, now I gave you a promise and you didn't believe I could carry it out. Let me make sure you understand something about my character. That I am El Shaddai. Let me, get, let me break it, I'm finished. I'm coming to a close, that's my subject. That's the name of God I wanna talk about for just three more minutes. He's El Shaddai. Pastor, what do, you want, what do you want us to get? What is it that you want us to understand? I want you to understand that the God we serve is almighty, all-sufficient, 
and he don't need your help to carry out his promise. I wish I had a praying crowd. I don't know who this message is for, but somebody here who has gotten a promise from God and you think that God has forgotten about you, he's abandoned you, he's neglected you, he told me to tell you he's El Shaddai. He might not come when you want him to come, but he'll come right on time. He, he'll step in when the time is right. He'll step in. I don't know what he's working on. I don't know what he's waiting on, but all I know is he doesn't need your help. Somebody high five two or three people and say, he don't need your help. I know you feel like he forgot. I know you think like maybe he's lost his power. I know you think and feel as though he's incapable. Maybe he's died. Maybe he's on vacation. Maybe he's, maybe you done done something to escape. You know what I know about God? When he made the promise that he made to you, he already knew how jacked up you were going to be when he made the promise. And I'm thanking God tonight that in spite of my jacked upness and your jacked upness and your messing up and your failures, he is El Shaddai. Hallelujah. He's able. Somebody say he's able. He's more than able. He got you. He got your back. He got your front. He got your side. He knows about your journey. He is El Shaddai. So whatever you're going through, Whatever your issue is, whatever is making you think that God has left the scene and he done forgotten about you, he told me to tell you, tell them, I am El Shaddai. Somebody ought to go ahead and give him some praise. Who am I preaching to tonight? Who needs that word tonight? Who needs to give God the praise and say, I believe God. I believe God. I know it's been 25 years. I know it's been a long time. I know I might feel abandoned, but my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. He is here. Hallelujah. He's a healer. He's a way maker. He's a burden bearer. He's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. He's El Shaddai. Don't need nobody's help. Doesn't need no assistance. Don't need you to work out an extra plan. He got it under control. He is El Shaddai. Excuse me, I feel something down in my soul tonight. <laughs> He's able. He's more than able. I know you are doubting him. I know there are questions, but he just told me to tell you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am Almighty God. Yes, Woo! Hallelujah. Go ahead and give him some praise. Go ahead and give him some thanks.
tell two or three people he's all sufficient. Y'all know what all sufficient means? He got everything that he needs. He got everything that he needs. He's sufficient all by himself. He don't need nobody's help. El Shaddai. Hallelujah. I'm done. Amen. Y'all go ahead. from glory God with us the living truth and what we have in you you are the living word awesome ruler gentle redeemer God in us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you. You are the living word. Jesus, 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 that's what you, that's what we call you. Manger born, yes. Manger born, put on a tree. That's what we call you. That's what we call you. Major born. Major born, put on a tree. You died to save humanity. You are the living. You are the living. saved, backslidden, unsure of your eternal destiny, or you're saved, but you want to join First Baptist, right now would be the time to come. We extend an invitation. If you need the Lord Jesus, 
you need forgiveness of your sins. He, he, he's able to wash away all of your sins. Doesn't matter what you've done, how deep into sin you've fallen. He can cleanse you, make you whole, forgive you. Come. If you're not sure of your eternal status, we can help you get blessed assurance. If you are, if you drifted away and out of fellowship with God and you want to get back in fellowship with God, we can help you get reconnected in your fellowship with Him. Or maybe you're saved, but you need a church. This here is a great church for you to be a part of. So if you fall in any of those categories, just make your way out. Just get out. We're going to shout and give God the glory and dance and celebrate when you come. Don't put it off. Go ahead. Sing that through one more time, uh, Reverend Hurd. And we're going to see if there's anybody here today that wants to get right with God. Right now would be the right time to come. You are the living word. You are the living Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. seated.